Hello, I'm Dr. Steve Hotze. Welcome to Health and Wellness Solutions. Have you ever approached your physician with complaints of fatigue, difficulty losing weight, sensitivity to the cold, inability to focus or think clearly, depressed moods, insomnia, menstrual abnormalities, or loss of libido, among other symptoms? Did you ask your physician if these symptoms might have something to do with hypothyroidism? Did your physician run a blood test and after the blood test came back and told you that everything was within the normal range? Well, at the Hotsey Health and Wellness Center, we take a multifaceted approach to diagnosing and treating hypothyroidism. With me today to discuss four ways to diagnose hypothyroidism is Dr. David Sheridan and Dr. Don Ellsworth. Thank you both for joining us today. Thank nice you. To be here. pleasure. There are four ways to diagnose hypothyroidism. One, determine the clinical symptoms. Two, determine the physical signs, which are the objective findings that a physician has on physical examination. Determine the body temperature and get a good family history. Uh, Dr. Ellsworth, would you discuss with us the clinical symptoms that you might find in a patient with hypothyroidism? Thank you, Dr. Hudson. And it bears repeating that thyroid hormones do govern the ability of our cells to produce and use energy. Therefore, the effects of hypothyroidism are gonna be very broad. For example, we might have low energy, we might have weakness, we might have trouble losing weight, we might have cold sensitivity, our hands and feet in particular, decreased mental sharpness or brain fog, slow thought process, sluggish speech, sluggish bowel function, depressed moods or mood swings, some folks have anxiety attacks, joint and muscle pain, sometimes called fibromyalgia, headaches, migraines, burning or tingling of the numbness of our hands and feet, trouble with recurrent infections, weak immune system, shortness of breath, angina, heart pain from a blockage of the coronary arteries. So those are key clinical symptoms, and for a patient to, to describe those, that really takes quite a bit of time in a doctor's office, and a doctor has to be attuned to those problems, don't they? It certainly they? does. Now, so the first way to make a diagnosis or begin to make a diagnosis of hypothyroidism is to get a good clinical history and determine the clinical symptoms. What about the physical science, the objective science a doctor finds on Physical examination, Dr. Sheridan. Well, there are also things that show on us physically. You can have hair loss, especially in women. Uh, the hair can be coarse. Uh, loss of the lateral third of the eyebrows, that's called Hertog's sign. Uh, enlarged tongue, you get scalloping of the lateral borders of the tongue where the tongue swells and pushes against the teeth. The skin tends to be pale. The people tend to be puffy, have pasty skin. Loss of body hair, ridges in the fingernails you can see. Uh, about half of low thyroid patients are overweight. You can get swelling in the face, paleness of the lips, non-pitting swelling of the extremities, cold hands. Not just they feel cold, but I can feel their hands uh, and they're cold. Blood pressure can go up. Coronary artery disease, atherosclerosis is a common sequelae, a common result of long-standing hypothyroidism. Mm -hmm. Cholesterol can be elevated. Body temperature is often low. So there are a lot of things on physical exam that can give us a clue. Now, a given individual doesn't have to have all of them, but the more you have, I feel, the more likely you are to be low thyroid. I think that's really a good point, mm -hmm. because sometimes people will look at the symptoms and they say, well, I don't have all the symptoms, so right. I guess I don't have it. And so, and so we have varying degrees of hypothyroidism. We have people that are just starting to become hypothyroid, so they have a few symptoms and they have very mild symptoms, whereas people that have had it for years or decades can have progressively more severe symptoms, and oftentimes they may have all the symptoms and many of the, all the signs that, you, that we've discussed here. I think a classic error uh, surrounds weight. Many people are told falsely by their doctor, you cannot have a thyroid problem because you're thin. But the data shows us that only about half of low thyroid individuals actually have weight problems. So we see a fair number of fairly thin or at least normally built hypothyroid patients. Interestingly enough, in, there, in some cases, people with hypothyroidism can be underweight. We've seen <laughs> Absolutely. that. So it's just the opposite of what you would expect. Now we talked about basal body temperature as a third weight or just the body's temperature. Explain that to us. What does the body temperature have to do with helping in making a diagnosis on hypothyroidism? The body temperature is a reflection of our metabolism and the normal body temperature is 98.6. This is the temperature that is generated from our cells production of energy which 
is based upon the thyroid activity at the cell level. When thyroid hormone activity is decreased, it is associated with a decline in our body temperature. As our body temperature consistently runs below 98.6, it increases the likelihood that hypothyroidism is present and a therapeutic, of, therapeutic trial of desiccated thyroid is in order. Oh, and I just pulled a study of the last 200 patients we've seen here at the Hotsey Health and Wellness Center. And what we found is that the average temperature in the office when they came in was 97 degrees. It should have been 98.6. That's one and a half degrees below normal, which is indicative of low energy production in the cells because the cells produce energy to drive the uh, uh, mitochondria and all the biochemical reactions in the body. The excess energy is given off as heat. So if we have low heat production, that's a good sign that we have low metabolism, which directly relates to the thyroid. Now, the fourth way that would be in, uh, an indication that a patient may have a thyroid problem, if they have all these signs and symptoms and a low body temperature, uh, would be family history. Tell us, what does family history have to do with thyroid problems? Hypothyroidism tends to run in families. Mm -hmm. So when you ask, you know, did your mom or dad have a thyroid problem, aunts, uncles, you know, grandparents, this is telling, again, because it tends to run in families. But also, I think it's important to get a family history of coronary artery disease because that can be a sign of low thyroid and, uh, and weight issues. You know, families share a gene pool. They also share the dinner table, so obviously they eat alike. But still, when you see things trend in a family, it's a hint to what might be going on in the individual. And one of the big uh, points you made about family history is coronary artery disease because we know that hypothyroidism does lead to coronary artery disease. Well, there are four ways to make a diagnosis of hypothyroidism. First, get a good clinical history and listen to the patient's symptoms. Second, get a good physical examination and be aware of what the physical signs of hypothyroidism are. Third, look at the, uh, the patient's body temperature. If it's running below 98.6 on a consistent basis, that's indicative of low energy production, low metabolism, and a hypothyroidism diagnosis. And finally, a good family history might point you in the direction that this patient uh, does have hypothyroid based upon the fact that uh, siblings or family members or parents or other relatives have had hypothyroidism. Well, thank you both, Dr. Sheridan and Dr. Ellsworth, for joining us today. 